Hey guys and girls, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to sync time between the server and the client without the need to send any data over the network. This part on the left side is being updated by the server, while this part on the right side is being updated by the client. And even though they have no communication between one another, we can see that they're both in sync. So the benefit of having a client-sided clock that's in sync with the server is now we can have things like day-night cycles and round timers that require no data from the server to keep in sync with other players. So what I've done now is I've created a part called client part and inside of this part I've put a surface GUI and a text label and I have another part which is the exact same as the client part but this part on the left side and also has a surface GUI and text label. I've created two scripts that are almost identical so we have the server script and the local script. So the server script is getting the server parts, service GUI, text label, text, and setting it to the OS time every heartbeat. And on the local script, we're waiting for the game to finish loading, and we're getting the run service, and on the heartbeat event, we're updating the client parts, service GUI, text labels, text, to the OS time. I've published the game and entered the game, so we can see that the server's clock and the client clock are pretty much in sync. So the problem with OS time is the time is taken from the operating system. So if someone has the incorrect time set on their operating system, then this time on the client side will also not be correct. So I can change this and press the change button and I can change the date to 1992 and as soon as I press the change button keep an eye on this value over here we can see that this value has changed and we're no longer in sync with the server. Now let me show you how to sync the time between the client and the server if they're not the same. So inside of replicated storage I'm going to create a remote function and I'm also going to create a number value and I'm going to name this number value delta time. I'm now going to create a script inside of server script service and I'm going to name this script delta time and delete this first line here and what I'm going to do in this script is assign a function to be called when this remote function is fired. So to do this I'm going to say game dot replicated storage dot remote function dot on server invoke equals function and this function is going to tell me which player called this event and all I'm going to do within this function is simply return the OS time back to the client and what I'm going to do now is inside of replicated first I'm going to create a local script and I'm also going to call this local script delta time and I'm going to delete this first line here and inside of this script the first thing I'm going to do is wait for the remote function so I'm going to say game replicate storage wait for child remote function and store it in a variable called remote function I'm then going to do the same but this time for the delta time number value so I'm going to say delta time equals game dot replicate storage wait for child delta time. What I'm going to do now is call the remote function which is going to tell me the server's OS time. I'm then going to subtract the client's OS time from the server's OS time and save the difference inside of this delta time value. So to do this I'm going to say delta time dot value equals remote function invoke server and this is going to tell me the server's OS time and then I'm going to subtract the client's OS time and this is going to, going to store the difference inside of the delta time value. 
So now that I'm saving the difference between the server and the client's time inside of the delta time, what I can do is come into the timer script on this local script and add the delta time value to this OS time value to get the synced time. So plus game.replicatedStorage delta time dot value. Now even though today is the 16th of August, I've set my OS time to the 27th of July and because we're adding the delta time on the client side, we can see that the server and client are still in sync. So because we're only calculating the delta time when they initially enter the game, if their OS time changes while they're in the game, then the sync will break. So if I set set time automatically to bring the clock back into sync with uh, the correct time, we can see that now the client side is no longer in sync with the server. So the benefit of OS time is that all servers will have the exact same time. The downside to OS time is it's very easy for the client to change the time on local scripts and it's only updated once every second. So let's now, instead of using OS time, let's use OS clock. OS clock tells us the CPU time. So what I'm going to do is inside of timer, I'm going to comment out the delta time and I'm going to change this to clock. And I'm also going to go into the server timer and I'm going to change this into clock. So I've now published and entered the game and we can see that clock updates a lot more frequently and we have a lot more decimal points making it very hard to read. So let's quickly fix this. So instead of passing the OS clock directly into the text label, I'm going to use string format to only pass up to the first decimal point. And I'm also going to do the same on the client side, like so. So we can now see that the client CPU time is not the same as the server's CPU time. And even if the client changes the OS time, so if I change the date to 1992, this has no effect on the CPU time. So let's now fix this delta time value to use the OS clock instead of OS time. So I'm going to go into the delta time script and instead of returning OS time, we're going to return OS clock. And I'm going to go into the delta time script over here. And instead of comparing this function with OS time, we're going to compare it with OS clock. And let's also go back into the timer script and let's bring this back in. So I'm going to cut this like this and bring it next to clock and delete the comment like so. So instead of just passing the OS clock into the text label, we're going to add the delta time value so that it goes into sync with the server. And I've now published the game and we can now test that the OS clock on the client side is in sync with the server side but there's one small thing we can add to improve it slightly. Let's assume that this red box on the left is the Roblox server and the green box on the right side is my computer. So the server is sending me the OS clock over the network and the time it takes for this data to be sent to my computer is different depending on multiple factors. For instance, how far away I live from the server, but let's assume that the time it takes is one second. So if it takes one second, when the server gets the OS clock, let's assume that the OS clock is five and they send the value of five over the network to my client and my client now receives the value five. But because it took one second to get to the client, the server is now at a value of six, 
when the client receives the value 5. So the client will be one second out from the server. So what the client can do is if the client knows it takes an average one second for data to be sent from the server to the client, they could add that one second to the five and that would result in six. So it would be closer in sync with the server. There is a function called get network pink. And what this does, it returns the engine calculated latency of a player in seconds. So this is the time taken for data to be sent from the client to the server, then back again to the client. But we only want the time it takes to go from the server to the client. So we would need to divide this value by two. So if we go into our delta time script on the local script, we can add the network ping to the delta time to further improve the accuracy. So plus game.players.localPlayer get network ping. And if we remember, we need to divide this value by two. So divided by two, like so. And now our delta time should be slightly more accurate. So now let's use the delta time to make a day-night cycle on the client side. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a local script inside of Replicated First. And I'm going to call this script Lighting. And I'm going to delete the first line here. And the first thing I'm going to do in this script is get the run service, like so. I'm then going to get this delta time object inside of replicated storage. So I'm going to wait for child delta time. And I'm now going to connect a function to the heartbeat event. If we look at the lighting object, and look at the clock time property, we can see that this value goes from zero, and once it hits the value of 24, it loops back to zero. So what I'm going to do is say game.lighting.clocktime equals OS clock, and then I'm going to add the delta time value so that we're in sync with the server, and then I'm going to put brackets around this, like so, and so that it loops back to zero once we hit the value of 24, I'm going to use the modulus operator 24. So if we now test the game, we can now see that there is a day-night cycle that's run on the client side, so the sun should be moving very smoothly. And it's kind of fast, so let's slow the day-night cycle down. So what I'm going to do is add a new variable called hours per second and I'm going to set it to 0.1 so that means every second 0.1 hours will pass in game. So now I'm going to multiply this value by hours per second. So I'm going to copy this, multiply hours per second. So now that we've done the lighting let me show you how to do rounds. So the first thing I've done is added another part, just like the client part and the server part. The only difference is I have a service GUI with two text labels, one called message for the top and one called timer for the bottom half. And I also have a number value called time. So the first thing I'm going to do inside of server script service, I'm going to create a new script and I'm going to call this script rounds and I'm going to delete the first line here. And inside of this script, what I'm going to do is make a while true do loop. And the first thing I'm going to do is set the message text to round started. And then I'm going to set the time value to the OS clock plus 10. Then I'm going to wait for 10 seconds. Then I'm going to set the message, this one over here, to round ended. Then I'm going to set the time value this value over here to the OS clock plus five, and then I'm going to wait for five seconds. And I'm going to keep doing this over and over again. If we now test the game, we can see that the server updates this text label, 
and we can also see that the server is updating the number value so every time the round ends or starts this number value will change so now on the client side we're going to use this number value to update this timer text label so inside of replicated first I'm going to create a new local script and I'm going to name this script rounds and I'm going to delete this first line here and the first thing I'm going to do inside of this script is get the time number value so to do this I'm going to say local time value equals workspace wait for child part and wait for child time the next thing I'm going to do is get the timer text label so to do this I'm going to say local text label equals workspace wait for child part wait for child surface GUI and wait for child timer and now I'm going to wait for the delta time value so to do this I'm going to say local delta time equals game dot replicated storage wait for child delta time I'm now going to do a while true do loop like so and the first thing I'm going to do inside of this loop is get the time so I'm going to say local clock equals OS clock and I'm going to add the delta time value so that we're in sync with the server the same way we did before and then I'm going to get the difference from this time to the time that was set inside of the part so to do this I'm going to say local delta equals time value negative clock and now I'm going to update the timer text label so to do this I'm going to say text label dot text equals string format and I'm only going to show up to one decimal point and I'm going to pass in the delta value and now I'm going to add a wait and we can wait for as much as we want but I'm going to update every 0.1 seconds so I'm going to say task dot wait 0.1 and if we now test the game we can see that the client can use the time number value to calculate the countdown so hopefully in this video we've learned that it's possible to have a clock in sync between the server and the client without the need to send thousands of events over the network to the clients Thank you for watching my video and if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below.